No. Seriously. I'm not gonna come, you know, I'm not gonna walk down Arrow Valley if you have to push me about the university. The answer is no. No to the university, no to James and Cassandra, and it is no to all of you. No to the movie, no to everything. Just listen to that and put this on a loop so you can repeat it. As I repeatedly have said this for so many months that the words have lost all meaning. The answer is I don't want to be involved in your lives and fuck off. Seriously, back. I said a positive sense of people, you know, that will, you know, can still get me even though I've changed a bit. But yeah, that's what would actually be helping me. Instead of trying to like, persuade me to be in production, it's actually just been time. That's That's what this is all about, is that I'm lonely and depressed and bored and my crazy little game that I play is what keeps me sane, well, sane-ish. So, yeah, I'd love to have lunch with Barbara and, and some of my other friends and you know, sort of have the same kind of conversation I have with Ethan, which is, you know, uh, how, how's it going, what are you up to kind of thing. I miss that. I don't want to 
uh, and like trying to make me perform instead is silly. You know, just just be my friends, not my not my bloody you know performance partner. Well, this is legal cannabis. And we've got the flower, and we have got the oil. Now I'm going to take the flower because I just have another pipe on me and I don't happen to have... Well, I could take the oil but I'm curious about the, about the CBD flower so I'm going to have the smoke. But they say to use a vaporizer. So this is what the buds look like. So this is where the hardest for the first time is. My benefit, I get three hundred and sixty dollars. Two weeks back pay. You know where I reside. You know my address. It's on the system. It says forty-five Dixon Street. That's my couch surfing. That's where I actually sleep on a couch. <laughs> What about a cigarette, may I leave? Or should I leave right now? You leave right now. Well, could I please roll a cigarette first to start de stressing? Is that okay? Yeah, please. You need to calm down, man, because I'm not appreciating your attitude, okay? Oh, I hate the police. Oh. Yeah, you think I'm supposed to have my supposed to love you? It's not up to you, man. You can feel however you want. Are you good that you feel proud to be a police officer, bro? Yep. Fuck, I hope so, man. How did the EC section go? What did it do? Wait, roll your cigarette and you're gonna need to go, man. I was just gonna have to sell. I'm gonna find the same guy against you. Oh, you, you have, mate. Otherwise, you'd be somewhere else, don't do your thing. This is 
What's your psychos get up to, mate? Educate people. You can't officially warn me because I didn't know I don't have a phone. That's why I'm warning you now. Okay? So you can't be out in public during the day. You can go get food and you can go back to wherever you are, but that's about it. Because this is going to come up as a warning in the system that if you're out and again, you've got to be pretty much treated as a 24 hour curfew. Like every other person in New Zealand has. Why are there people out on the street? So you just slam some rules on place and we don't know about them and we get a warning for our first fucking thing. Hey, pretty much all of you deal with Oh, mate, right. how are we supposed to know as homeless we people? Are how are we supposed to know as homeless people what's we're going on? Your cigarette. How are we supposed to know what's going on as homeless people? I'm telling you now. Roll your cigarette and leave. How old are you, sir? I think I'm older than you, man. I'm more of an adult. If you leave me de stress and just leave me alone and don't talk to me, I'm off the cigarette. Fuck off. It's a simple fact for you, sir. I'm 37 years old. How old are you, sir? Doesn't matter. Alright, I'm more intelligent than you are, mate. I'll be to the test.
the, it's the tactics um, of uh, the transnational criminal syndicates, which are utilised in the Pacific uh, as a trafficking uh, thoroughfare, which have changed. Uh, previously, we'd see um, facilitators, um, which would be paid uh, normally in, in drugs, um, in methamphetamines uh, or cocaine, which they would then sell um, to you know a very small uh, number uh, or market which was available to them, made up of uh, expatriates, um, you know, and commercial elites. Uh, while now uh, what we're seeing is um, the growth of uh, regional uh, indigenous criminal networks, um, which are feeding a, a local market um, and behaving uh, as uh, facilitators and, and working with transnational criminal syndicates uh, to get to um, to make it easier to move the drugs through the Pacific, um, but having a devastating impact on Pacific societies uh, as well. So give us a sense of what effect it is actually having on society and how that might be breaking down. Well, uh, it, it, it lose, the, the elders lose the influence and the respect that they normally have. Um, an individual who is involved in, uh, for example, uh, drug dealing um, and uh, has uh, the financial means to, uh, for example, uh, pay for weddings, funerals, um, to give loans to members of the community, uh, raises his position um, in the uh, village hierarchy and uh, uh, and uh, almost creates a competing uh, power structure, uh, which erodes away from the traditional power structures of the elders uh, of the churches, um, which normally uh, were uh, able to uh, keep the cohesion of uh, um, uh, of these communities. What sort of support is there for people who then become addicted to drugs? That's one of the, the challenges for the uh, for the Pacific region at the moment is that there isn't much in regards to support uh, for, um, for example, detox centres um, and ways to uh, to assist people to um, uh, to move away from uh, the cycle of drug addiction uh, and uh, criminality, especially before um, uh, getting into the, the cycle of incarceration. I think by by uh, by looking uh, at the issues in the in the, in the, in the Pacific. Um, the fallout from the, the, the drug trafficking through the region uh, through a law enforcement lens uh, purely is doing the Pacific a disservice. Um, it, there's not uh, that great in, in engagement with civil society. Um, there's not, uh, the, there is no um, uh, creation of uh, a safety net uh, to ensure that, in, in, uh, that uh, users and, uh, and even uh, people who do not want to continue in this uh, in this type of lifestyle, um, don't have the support to be able to uh, move away from it uh, safely. The demand for drugs in both Australia and New Zealand is driving a lot of the trafficking in the Pacific. Are those countries providing any support? Now, from the growth of these uh, uh, regional uh, criminal syndicates, uh, is driven by uh, Australia and New Zealand's uh, drug markets and the appetite for, uh, for methamphetamine and cocaine. Um, and it's the engagement with um, criminal actors in Australia, um, criminal uh, syndicates um, uh, and uh, outlaw motorcycle gangs uh, and others, uh, and also with transnational criminal syndicates, uh, which is uh, in, empowering these uh, regional criminal syndicates and which is making it uh, so difficult to mitigate um, and to uh, arrest their, uh, uh, their operations. Um, I think one of the, um, uh, the things that, uh, that Australia and New Zealand are doing right is that uh, Australia and New Zealand's partners have created quite a, a robust um, uh, law enforcement security architecture in the region uh, in, in partnership uh, with Pacific Island countries, law enforcement and governments. Uh, but this um, architecture in itself uh, needs to continuously evolve and uh, needs to be enhanced. The, the threat that they're facing, these international criminal syndicates by nature, uh, evolve at a speed which is greater uh, than uh, law enforcement um, can generally uh, counter. And what about providing support for people and rehabilitation services from Australia and New Zealand? Well, currently we're not seeing much of that. There is a, a lot of money being um, uh, uh, that's being used to fund uh, law enforcement uh, initiatives, uh, capacity building training, uh, in regards to uh, equipment, uh, which has definitely had an impact in uh, in regards to um, drug seizures, uh, larger drug seizures. B uh, but more uh, funds uh, need to be um, aimed towards um, 
NGOs or organisations uh, which can um, assist uh, people who are caught in the, in the cycle of drug addiction. And I think this is a key role that um, Australian, NG Australian New Zealand NGOs can play by partnering with uh, their counterparts in the, or their partners in the, in the Pacific, uh, and especially by funding them, because currently there is not much uh, in that field uh, in the Pacific uh, region. Great to talk, Jose. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. The poor hinged canopy Over the shot I can pretend that it's foliage Nothing but me to rise with my blood, with my last breath, as if my life hung on the winds. I took to the sea. The swim would do me good, far enough from shore for a rest, for gazing upwards. For the immensity A girl perched near me on the waves A messenger I 
I started back. Reaching land I wanted, would you recognize me shorn by the water? My wild heart speaking now to His blood on the page, not from the cliche of an oozing heart or from battering. It's the rhythm instead with nowhere to go. So it squeezed itself into the screw, a strange dance, a lot of life flattened out.
It will rise again from these shadows from the plain. Breath to breath, blood to blood, by detour. The only way I know. If you happen to glance the way For no special reason Perhaps you were restless As the morning stretched its fingers You wouldn't have seen much In the rising heat of the sun tree Nothing to see, really. With a sight of the two of them, were they speaking? As the day stretched out its promises. But if you pricked your ears a little, was it the rustle of cypresses? As we pass the table where they sat, the two of them. And did you feel that gentle open The skies for omens, the terrain for signs of approach. My centuries were dismissed long ago. It's not attack I fear. And in the waiting, waiting in the cold night air. Above the perfume of the earth, the dancing voice at last. At last, my hand says, There, my pen. This poor world, like so many bugs, so many flowers strewn about my voyaging. I'd knock at your door with my bouquet and linger at the threshold, hoping for your eyes, your tender, disbelieving eyes to take. Us in.
much time to speak of the rack of life. Night is for sipping from the brim of beauty's gone. Let me lift your hair without a sound. Let me find past reason, sell myself past worry, breathless to your arms. The rich should unfold the view and see at my back, stones on the shore, a grip of madness with a This table between us so delicately with beverages and fruit. A playground for nervous hands on a morning filled with questioning. There's a mess up there beyond your fragrant garden. Now I've checked my fancy ones. The ones we need for getting on in the bluster and the savagery at the door. Because I've come to sing in my way, narrowing my lips to phrase. To concentrate a breath from the narrow, watching your unheard eyes. They'll be in my words, they've come a long way traveling and spare. And how improbable the two of us reaching in the morning light 
the slight trembling cops. Oh, honey, your points are ringing. That's why we're here. For someone I haven't yet met You'll know who you are when you read them Wherever you are Because, well Let's just say you know And then you'll want to know more About the person the person who, without having met you, without having observed you from, as we poets like to say, afar. Who understood about the hours you spent alone listening beneath the noise of the world, the hucksters and the shoes, politicians, preachers, 
and the happily married ever after who sleep on either side of a barbed wire fence. Yes, you've been listening, whoever you are, for the crackling flames of a scorched earth love, the heavy fire. And from the glorious ashes, something worth living for. Shuffle teeth the tail at me because I couldn't get enough of you. And I have my lips to voyage across the secrets of your skin. My time to explore the difference and sources of desire. Your eyes to find me once again. And as I press with tender savagery, I will get home with you when masks are obsolete. Your silhouette is absent now, as the slanting sunlight falls as I lie in bed. Not your sense. Beauty, gossip, and the old life. We are opulent, finding it's the hard part. 
And half a stone of the going on, living all the way down by riches, or barefoot without a cent. Most of us take detours and stop midway, where the cloudless sky and gentle breezes sing along. Go on to make a deal and return to tell the tale. Let's be fair, they're not the best advertisement. They're not the type you'd invite to dinner by choice With their crazy eye and cracking jokes about death all over the place You think they're unafraid of the way they talk to love As the brilliance flickering in the city above fell upon my gathering. Can you hear the rest of common cycles? The canopy, the sea, and we, eternal song. As we lay face in the sea, the large irregular rock, the signal promontory had our backs, a shout of banana. I thought of Providence. You, we 
with your cheek against my chest The bit of dust and stone beneath me The implacable rhythmic licking of the waters You who came out of nowhere were on some unseen current I traced the features of your face with my hand To prove to myself that you were real and to tell you something about the man who held you The towering storm behind us The relentless sea you held When the winds picked up I drew you even closer Over me entirely The jagged debris pressed hard underneath It was a good this reminder of the weakness of flesh The bitter to marvel at how you drew me to the precipice I shall not ignore or avoid it You with your whispering And with your ear now against my breast As I stroked your hair slowly and tenderly I knew you heard what moved within The thunder of wanderers Who might give each other wars For every greater joy, there's greater pain, no matter how it's small. And what breathing ecstasies will end upon certain of return. That's why, my darling, when I hold you near, I hold for dearest life, and when I kiss, I kiss for fathoming. In a world cool and dark, the strangest creatures move with me The next magnificent than an outcome of light As I embrace you, I embrace 
this harbinger, the deep of endless rest, the more bear and bear and bear and we two are awake. We wander our way upwards through the cover of trees. It was a shock to behold the small, brilliant cluster set amid the low, soft grasses of the clearing. Their tall, slender stalks, the finger like petals, delicate and placable, this patch of perpendicular against the green, the merging blues of sea in the distance, and out above brought them out these nameless flowers all the more. Had they been waiting for a pair of lovers to mark their improbable beauty? And as we lay together on the fringe of the cops, I could feel you try, could feel your hesitance, your heave against the barrier of lips, not opening, not yet. Despite my waiting arms, in the long moment of the startling blossoms, and the grasses, and the whitening sea below, as the wind picked up as I held you near, not knowing quite. No matter my love, and the plenty of a kiss, there is enough for now, I think. Gazing at the spring, it's reached the accomplishment of time. Slowly, the sweep of cloud emerged with the breaking light, the mottled patchwork sky no longer hanging low over the dancing shallows, over the never-wearying sea. When I took your hand that day, was it a minute or an age ago, 
your face and hue, a tale of multitudes of the rampaging past sank solemnly brighter below. When I took your hand that day to kiss your palm and guide it over my throat, were you expecting birdsong, harvest, puckering of fruit, and blue above so infinitely beckoning? Was I anticipating how the supple tones of your flesh would compass me, and now the depths are hid, whether of necessary agony or the serene of a daytime moon? Look, does it climb or fall, as we gaze above from our cloistered perch, from the contours of a joy most precious for, like all, a brilliant transience.